Setting the altimeter correctly is one of the most important things for an instrument pilot to learn. Pilots have died because they didn't know how to set the altimeter properly. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how to do that in detail. Welcome to Free Pilot Training, I'm Josh. Today we're continuing our IFR ground course by talking about how to properly set the altimeter. And to get started, I wanna ask you a quick question. What do you think happens when we adjust the altimeter or twist in a new setting into the Colesman window of the altimeter? If you remember from the last lesson, when you dial in a specific air pressure into the Colesman window of the altimeter, you're telling the altimeter where sea level is. On a standard day, sea level has a pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury. But if you adjust the pressure setting in your altimeter, how much does the altimeter change when you do that? In case you didn't know, air pressure drops about one inch of mercury for every thousand feet of altitude that you gain. So if I'm taking off at an air fill with an elevation of a thousand feet MSL, then technically my air pressure is gonna be 28.92 inches here if my altimeter setting is 29.92. Then if I take off and I climb up to 2000 feet MSL, which is a thousand feet above the ground, then the air pressure would be 27.92 inches here and my altimeter will correctly give me my height above sea level because I told it where sea level was. And when the ATIS or the METAR gives you the setting at the local field, they're telling you where sea level is so you can set the altimeter properly. These products are not actually giving you the air pressure. Now that you know this, it's a lot easier to understand what happens to your indicated altitude when you adjust the altimeter setting. And not only do you need to know this for safe IFR flight, but you might also see a few questions about this on the FAA written exam. In fact, these can be a little bit confusing, so let's see how they might ask this. What will happen to your indicated altitude if you adjust your altimeter and put in a lower altimeter setting? Will your indicated altitude increase or decrease? The correct answer is that indicated altitude will decrease. Think back on our picture. Let's say I'm sitting at my airfield and I had 30.12 inches set into my altimeter. My airplane currently thinks that sea level is 30.12, but if I spin in 29.97 into the Colesman window, sea level comes up to meet me at that lower air pressure. While this is happening, my indicated altitude is decreasing because I'm getting closer to sea level. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, just remember that spinning in a lower altimeter setting will also lower your indicated altitude. But on the test, they're going to ask you how much your indicated altitude went down when you adjusted the altimeter. But don't worry, this is actually pretty simple to figure out. The key is to remember that air pressure decreases one inch of mercury every thousand feet of altitude. Once again, our altimeter was set at 30.12. When ATC gives us an altimeter setting of 29.97 inches, this will decrease our indicated altitude. So all we have to do is subtract 29.97 from our original setting of 30.12. As you can see, our altimeter changed 0.15 inches of mercury. We put in a lower altimeter setting, so our indicated altitude dropped. To figure out how much it dropped, we just have to multiply 0.15 inches by 1,000 because air pressure decreases one inch every 1,000 feet. 0.15 times 1,000 is 150. So our indicated altitude went down 150 feet. Super simple stuff. Actually, it's even easier in the plane because you can just look down at the altimeter. If I had 30.12 set at this airfield, I could just watch it drop 150 feet when I dialed in the correct setting. And I can verify that it's right because my indicated altitude should match my field elevation if I'm sitting on the ground like this. Let's try one more really quick. Let's say I'm flying at 4,000 feet MSL with an altimeter setting of 29.85. How would my indicated altitude change in this case if ATC gave me a new setting of 3002? Well, first of all, I'm spinning in a bigger setting. So my indicated altitude would increase, wouldn't it? Sea level was originally here, but now I'm telling it that it's down here, so I'm higher above sea level, aren't I? So we'll take 3002 and subtract 29.85 from that to get a difference of 0.17. Multiply that times 1,000 and we get 170 feet. Our indicated altitude increased by 170 feet. And in this case, we'd want to get back down to our altitude of 4,000 feet because we're 170 feet above our assigned altitude now. 
Now that you have that down, I want to talk a little bit more about flight levels. And I want to talk about some of the dangerous situations you can get yourself into if you don't set the altimeter properly. In the last lesson, we talked about how to set the altimeter when you operate at a flight level. Anytime we're told by ATC to climb and maintain a flight level, we need to set our altimeter to 29.92 and fly the assigned pressure altitude. For example, let's say Fort Worth Center assigned us flight level 180. We should have a pressure setting of 29.92 set in the altimeter. And then we can fly a pressure altitude of 18,000 feet. And it's really important for us to do this because ATC is expecting us to be flying at this altitude. But what should we do if there's a plane flying below us in class echo airspace and you hear ATC give them an altimeter setting of 3042? Cherokee 734A Juliet, Texas Arcana altimeter 3042. 3042, Cherokee 734A Juliet. At this point, should we go ahead and switch to that setting since that is technically the correct altimeter setting for this area? And what would happen if we did that? Negative. The only time that you should switch to the current altimeter setting is if you're specifically told to do so by ATC. And this won't usually happen unless there's nobody below you and ATC has issued a descent below the Class A airspace. Think about it. What would happen if you put 3042 into your altimeter when you're up here? Once you spin it in, your indicated altitude would then read 18,500 feet. So you would descend down to an indicated altitude of 18,000. And you could potentially be 500 feet off your assigned altitude because of this. In fact, this is probably the reason why transponders with altitude reporting are required when you fly above 10,000 feet MSL. They don't want some dingleberry flying down here at 17,500 without them knowing about it. Here's another problem that's a lot more likely to happen, and actually, it's probably a lot more dangerous. What would happen if you descended out of class alpha from a flight level and you forgot to set the altimeter to the local setting? As you well know, this can cause you to be off your assigned altitude, and this can be quite dangerous if you're flying in the weather for two reasons. Before we talk about those, I want to give you a quick memory aid. Not only will this be helpful on the test, but you might also need this information if you're flying in the weather and you realize that you forgot to reset the altimeter. From high to low, look out below. And from low to high, you're way too high. The first one simply means that if you go from a high altimeter setting to a lower altimeter setting, look out below because you're lower than you think. Your altimeter will fool you into thinking that you're flying at a safe altitude when you're actually way too low. Then we have this one. From low to high, you're way too high. If you go from a lower altimeter setting to a higher altimeter setting and you forget to set your altimeter, you'll be higher than you think. This one doesn't seem as dangerous, but it can be, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But first, what would your altitude error be if you landed at an airfield with an elevation of 500 feet MSL and you accidentally left your altimeter at 29.92 when the local altimeter setting was actually 30.42? Well, 29.92 minus 30.42 is a difference of 0.5. So if we multiply that times 1,000, you can see that our altimeter is off by 500 feet. But are we high or are we low? This is where things get really confusing. Technically, the altimeter is going to indicate 500 feet low. This means that you're 500 feet higher than you think you are. Now, if you're like me, the more you think about this, the more confusing it gets. That's why I want you to remember the stupid little jingle. Low to high, you're way too high. In this situation, we're going from a lower altimeter setting of 29.92, and we're going into an area with a higher altimeter setting of 30.42. So if I don't reset my altimeter, I'll be 500 feet higher than I think I am because my altimeter will read 500 feet low. So what would our altimeter read if we landed at an airfield with a field elevation of 500 feet in this case? Well, our altimeter is reading 500 feet low, so our altimeter would read zero, wouldn't it? And based on my altimeter, I thought I was at zero feet MSL, but I'm higher than I think because I'm actually at 500 feet MSL. If this happens to you, it's going to confuse the crap out of you because the altimeter is indicating your pressure altitude and not your true altitude. Just remember the little jingles I taught you. Those make it army proof. In fact, I think a Marine could even figure it out. Now, before I leave you today, I want to show you two potentially dangerous situations that you could get yourself into if you forget to reset your altimeter from a flight level down to the local altimeter setting. First, let's say you're flying an ILS approach where your decision altitude is 700 feet, which is 200 feet AGL. 
This means that we must see the runway when we're 200 feet above the ground in order to land out of the approach. According to the local METAR, the ceilings at our airfield are at 500 feet AGL, which is 1,000 feet MSL, so we should be able to get under our clouds without an issue. But you forgot to set the altimeter to the local setting of 30.42, so you're 500 feet higher than you think. This means that you're really at 1,200 feet MSL when you thought you were at 700 feet. Because of this, you never even see the runway because your altimeter is set incorrectly and you're still in the clouds. As you can see, this can create a dangerous situation. But imagine if I was flying an approach in the weather where there was a tower near the airfield. Let's say my altimeter was set to 29.92, but I should have reset it to a local setting of 29.42. In this situation, I'm 500 feet lower than I think because I'm going from high to low. I need to look out below. Now let's say there's a tower 400 feet below your flight path on the approach. What do you think could happen? Yeah, if we're flying VFR, we could just go around it. But if you're in the clouds, well, you just descend down thinking you're right where you should be and then boom. As you can see, setting the altimeter properly is extremely important for safe IFR flight. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. And then when I'm done with the next video in this IFR ground course, I'll throw it right here. Thanks for watching. See ya.